camera. There you are. Welcome back from deployment. Give a lot of praise for him. Amen. God is good. Oh, God is faithful unto us. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. He keeps us in tune. He wakes us up. He feeds us. He clothes us. He gives us his spirit to be powerful and effectual. And this morning we are going to hear from God and what he has for us in the second part of the message, standing on his promises. Why don't you rise with me today as we read the theme passage for this morning, and that is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11 through 13. Please read with me. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Heavenly Father God, we are thankful. Lord, your word has gone forth to touch your people. Lord, your word is true and it manifests in our lives through your spirit. And Lord, we listen to your word today and it tells us that your thoughts of us are of peace. And this morning, I pray in the name of Jesus that your word will go forth and affect your people as they receive it with gladness and meekness. I pray that it shall manifest in our lives through your spirit. I pray in the name of Jesus that we shall stand on your promises to be about your business, to work the fields that are white with harvest, that men and women around the world shall come to know you because of us. And that we'll speak those things that become sound doctrine. And that all that we do should be acceptable before you. Lord, bless your speaker this morning. Let the anointing flow through to your people. And that those that receive it shall go out there to do your business. In Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks. And the church said, Amen. Please be seated. How is everybody doing this morning? Man, excited and ignited. What an awesome God we serve. Oh boy. Church, God has been good to us beyond measure. If we only knew how to pay him back, uh, we would have to do it abundantly, and we can never repay him, can we? Mm -mm -mm. You know, church, I was a young sailor several years ago trying to find direction for my life. I knew that there was something better than the life that I had. And I didn't have a bad life. It was an okay life. But there was that void that was missing. Little did I know that God had plans for me. He had promises for me that I just needed to hold on to. Sure enough, I got in the United States Navy to start a career. And a year and a half later, God found me. He found me because I was lost. I did not know where to turn to. But it had to take somebody, a messenger, 
a servant of God, somebody who would avail themselves of the Spirit of God to be used so somebody else would receive the gifts that I needed, which was salvation. Somebody had to avail themselves and allow God to use them and heed his spirit so that they can go out there to do the bidding that God had called them to do. So what I desired, the void I had in my life, would be filled. And as you can see, 30 years later, here I am. God is faithful. Good to see you all here. God is faithful. You see, he has promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And all who seek him diligently will find him. And he found me. And I have not been the same since. But I wonder, how many of us here have the same story? Do you remember where you were when God found you? Pastor Payne, it's good to see you here. Do you want to share where you were when God, when God found you? I was 19 years old. I was in the United States Navy, and I prayed one night, God, if you're real, please show me. And not long after that, I got an invitation to a Bible study and heard the truth. Gave my heart and life to Jesus Christ, August 11th, 1973. What an awesome story. Imagine that. Did you have one too? Yeah, it was just before I got out of the Navy. I was on the uh, shores of Lake Michigan watching Pastor, Pastor Davis baptize an individual, and God spoke to me right then and there um, and completely changed my life, and I committed. Thank you. Thank God for salvation. These are stories. These are legends of this church talking about how they're still here because something happened to them. Oh, my goodness. Church, how has your life changed since you met Christ? They were searching for Christ that day when he found them. Is there anything that God promises in his word that you have stood on yet has never come to pass? Please let us know. Maybe there is. God has promised you something, but it hasn't come to pass. I don't see a single hand in here. Okay, let me change the question. Is there anything that you have promised someone before that never came to pass. Okay, now, look at the difference. You see, that goes to tell you that our God is a God who answers promises. That is the difference between a spiritually led mindset and not so spiritually led one. You see, when you have the mind of Christ, you know that the scripture says to let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. So what do we need to do to turn our eyes to God for the life that we desire to have in him? I'm reminded of 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And it says, if my people which are called by my name. Christians, Christians shall humble themselves, humility, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. The condition then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. That is the promise on which we stand. 
in 2024. Many have a heart that is grieving or sick, maybe even dying and destitute of God's call. And he, God, is just waiting for the messenger to bring you along. Maybe you are that messenger. To help someone heal their land. Yet we are too busy staying our course and holding on to our own old habits. What habits, what vices do you have that you're holding on to that is hindering the work of God in your life? I had habits that hindered me from being effective for God's call. Only you can answer that question. What do you not want to give up? Because it will change your world. We heard the message from Pastor Elise the other day. When Jesus comes in, it's not the same. You wrestle and, and you fight. The spirit is wrestling against the flesh. And the two are twist against each other. It just does not work. What habits... What vices do we have that is hindering us from fulfilling the purpose that God has purpose for us to accomplish? He breathed in us in the spirit. He revived us. He quickened us. And he gave us gifts and talents to glorify himself in others, not ourselves. But we are holding back. Church salvation is knocking at the door of those that need it most, and that is us as sinners. It's too important for us to quit when we know his promises never fail, and they are reassuring. You know, I knew a man that resolved to hold on to his sinful state and habit. He literally said to me, I know that if Jesus comes for me today, I wouldn't go to heaven. He was aware. He was self-aware. He had been baptized in Jesus' name. But he knew that he was holding on to his habits, his vices, what the scriptures said are the wicked ways that we ought to turn away from. But he was content. Because he did not want Jesus to rock his boat, to move his cheese, he was content and satisfied because he was comfortable sitting in the chairs every day. What are you holding on to that is going to hinder you from being effective for Jesus in 2024. This bothered me because he was consciously sinful till he passed. He chose to endure his own habits than to stand on God's promises to redeem him. So today you can be that messenger of hope and good news to someone who needs a lifeline for transformation. Will you stand on God's promises to bring them the desired hope they need? Just like Naaman's servant was the messenger God used. 
So church, this morning I'm asking as this is the first service of 2024, as we are ushering a whole new year ahead of us. We had a 2023 that was blessed. We are all here. Some were not so fortunate, but we are here sitting in these, in these chairs listening to God right now speak to our hearts. And the question is, what will we do? We will, we will we be obedient to God's word? Are we going to care? Are we going to fast? Are we going to pray just as we decided to do in 2023 so that each and every one of us can reach one? I'm hearing affirmations. Each and every one of us desires to do so. I'm reminded in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 8, it says, And it was so when Elisha the man of God had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore, wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. We probably know the story, and I won't believe the beginning part of the story. But this prophet did what he had to do as a man of God, using a humble messenger. So which will you be today? my brothers and sisters, listening to God today. The messenger of hope or the prophet of healing to heal somebody's land. Sometimes we doubt what the messenger of God says. Mm. Are you hearing me, church? Sometimes we doubt that God can use us to heal somebody's land. Sometimes we sell ourselves short of the work that God is ready to do if we let him. Because we don't think we can or we are even good enough. And yes, you're right. You are not. But God is. God is. In fact, we try to tell God what we can and cannot do, don't we? Well, let's continue to see the story how when people are confident enough to stand on God's promises and allow God to do his work in their lives, for the better that is, it becomes profitable for us. Verse 9, it says, So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him. That's Naaman. Elisha sent a messenger to Naaman. He didn't go himself. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times. I love how God likes that seven number. Maybe I ought to figure out how I can come up with something that I got to do seven times for a breakthrough. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him saying, go and wash in Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean. Wow. See, the man of God stands on the word and the promise of God and proclaims the power of God through speech. Just by sending his messenger, the power of God's word and promise sustains us if we bring it to life. Just the word. 
the speech requires obedience and faith to receive it. The speech requires humility to fulfill it. The speech requires seeking a breakthrough by seeking God's intervention to sustain it. The Word of God. You should never look at the Word of God the same. The prophet sent a messenger with the word from God. Go and do this seven times, and this shall happen. The promise of God. Where is your faith? Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. See, three people, three, stood on God's promises of giving us the desires of our hearts. The servant, the prophet, and the leper. They all had to be in agreement for the work of God to be fulfilled. They had to be in agreement. You see, if you are the messenger and there's a message from God and you are the only bearer of the message and it's not in agreement with those that are the beneficiaries of it, God is not working. It has to be received in faith. It has to be fulfilled, and it has to be sustained. The three must be in agreement. Verse 11, but Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought, I thought, he will surely come out to me. I am somebody special. And stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place where I'm a leper and recover the leprosy. Mm. And not Abana and Fafa rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel. May I not wash in them and be clean? What are you talking about? I thought he was going to do this and that. So he turned and went away. And not just went away, but he went away in what? Rage. Rage. Are you seeing yourself in this picture? Because I am. Church, if you are sitting in these chairs and you are sleeping, then the Spirit of God is not working to your hearing. Because God is doing a work right now. You know, that's exactly what we all do. We think. I thought. I think I know how this should go. Really? Oh. <laughs> God. 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 Remember, God is the only one who kept his promises. You did not keep yours. How do you think it should go? You're not God. But that's exactly what we do. And that's exactly what that gentleman did after my conversation with him about his sinful 
and a precarious state. He believed he would be all right. But it wasn't too long after his life was cut short. I thought he was going to do such and such for God to grant him his heart's desire. What are you thinking right now that you think God should do for you to do your ministry when all he's asking you to do is obey? Obey his word. His word is spoken. He has commissioned us. He already paid the price on the cross. He's used his messengers to reach us, to speak those things that become sound doctrine. And yet here we are thinking. Like they say in the Navy, I don't pay you to think. You don't get paid to think. You just get paid to do. And he's the commander in chief. Pride. Personal thoughts and disobedience yield stay in the same state you are. That man went away in a rage because he thought. Wait, God has spoken. He used his messenger to reach you, to tell you what you got to do. But you think you're somebody. So you go away in rage? Okay. You stay the way you are. What state are you in right now that you think is acceptable? Yet God sees it as pride and self-righteousness in a wicked way. If you want to change the status quo and do a thing for God, if you desire that, you have to stop thinking how you think things should go and start obeying what God is telling you to do. He's already paid the price in Calvary and commissioned us through his spirit. When God is using his servant to tell you what should be done, here you are using your own judgment to determine what you think should be done. We continue the story in verse 13. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, that is a term of endearment. My Lord, my Father. If the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, would thus thou not have done it? How much rather then when he said to thee, go wash and be clean. How simple is that? Wash and be clean. Why don't you say with me? Wash and be clean. That's it. That's the promise. How simple is that? You know, we are so used to complicating the word of God. We love making it complex. Well, he got to do this and do some flips and then just do some balancing and do this and then God is going to give you... No, no, no. It's much simpler than that. Just, just be obedient. Until we begin to understand that his commandments are not grievous and begin to see God's promises for what they are, we will not be successful. 
He promised us a listening ear and a healed land if we did these four things. Be humble, pray, seek his face, and turn from our wicked ways. Sometimes it takes a little encouragement like the servant had to do with, his, with her master. Sometimes it takes some showing us a different perspective like she did about the difference between some great thing and some simple thing. Sometimes it takes just obedience and standing on God's promises because we know his thoughts toward us are peaceful. They are peaceful thoughts. They are pleasant thoughts. God wishes us no harm. God wishes his, his people to be successful. We are made in the image and likeness of God. God desires that we are his children. We are peculiar people. We are. Do we know who we are? So why are we selling ourselves short of what God wants for us? Why are we selling ourselves short? Do you realize the spirit in you is a phenomenal spirit that is, oh my goodness, think. And now our job is to bring that to somebody else so they can receive the gift of salvation and experience the blessings that God has blessed us with. We heard of testimonies of people who got breakthroughs and they are still here today almost 40-something, 50 years later. What will your testimony be 40 years from now? So what happened in this story? In verse 14, then went he down. After he got that perspective from his servant, he's like, mm, you know what, child, you're right. That is, that is true. Imagine that. This is just a simple thing. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise for that. It was that simple. It was that simple. This morning, church, my goal is to bring to you the word of God as it is, as simple as it is. Only until we have all come to an agreement and acted on it will the promises of God be fulfilled. Standing on his promises is about obedience to his word. Our desire this year, 2024, is to reach more people with the gospel. We want our youth to spearhead the campaign to reach more for Christ. Just like someone reached me that day when my heart was aligned to God's desire to find me. Somebody's waiting for you and I to be the messenger of God's word, to just speak so they can receive the blessing that God has for them. We will stand on God's promises and be obedient to the call of his spirit through his servant. Will you be that servant that brings someone restoration today? So how exactly will we do it in 2024? We will maintain a desire to see more souls saved as we did in 2023. Our desire in 2023 was each and every one of us to do what? To reach one. Each one, reach one. I'm going to go over a few numbers here on how we did in having guests in our building 
in 2023. In January of 2023, we had 49. February, we had 49 guests. March, 52. Next, 43. 34, 57, 72, 64, 48, 36, 53, and the year ended with 27 guests for a total of 584 visitors in this building on a Sunday morning. Give the Lord a praise for reaching. God used us to reach. Now the work has to continue. Of the 584, we need to do a better job of keeping them coming because I don't think we have 584 people sitting in these chairs today. Right? I need to reach somebody who's always going to stay fired up for God because I reached out to them, God reached out to them, and they got on fire, and now they are about God's business. But it takes us all being in agreement to work together to see that come to pass. If I desire that because I'm the messenger, and you don't desire that because you have something blocking your mind or blocking your work, and God is not being fulfilled in your life because you have certain things that are holding you up. You're not humble. You're not praying. You're not seeking God's face. And you still are holding on to your old habits. It's not going to work. Amen. The servant, the prophet, and the leper had to be in agreement. We all have to be in agreement to see this vision come to pass. So today I'm asking you, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, as a co-pastor of this church, I'm commissioning us to move forward with a vision for 2023. We want to have a legacy of making a difference for God just like the servant desired for her master. This year, we will do the same and stand on God's promises for a breakthrough in reaching our city and our youth with the gospel. Who will make that commitment today with me? Give a little praise if you will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What an awesome God we serve. And if you did not raise your hand, but in your heart you know you will do that, that's okay. That's okay. It's not about showing that you can't do it by raising your hand. It's about watching your heart because that's ultimately what's going to matter, right? Mm -hmm. That's how it works. The Spirit will bear you witness. This is a challenge we can all undertake. We got to care. We got to fast. And we got to pray on how we can reach someone. Last year, we had sheets back there that had caring, the acronym CARE, the acronym FAST, and the acronym PRAY. We still have it back there. When you leave, pick one up. And throughout the year, as we fast at different periods of, of, of the year, specifically for specific things, God is going to use that, and we're going to be the vessels that God is going to use to bring his will to come to pass, to bring promise and breakthrough to those that need it. The world is a dying place, and God is calling us to do that. And this sheet here, I got my wrinkled, sorry. Each one, reach one, 
in 2024. It says 2023, but it's 2024. What will we do? We will care. C stands for call and break barriers and boundaries or stereotypes. A stands for answer the curiosity and questions of the one you have encountered. R stands for respect the person's culture. And E stands for evangelize. That's our care. How we prepare for that? We're going to fast and pray. F stands for find your spiritual gift. A stands for accept your limitations. S, seek guidance through the leadership and your peers that are fired up for God. And T stands for test your strengths and encounters. And pray. Pray always and often. Resist the flesh and ego. A, acknowledge relationships. And Y, yield to the Spirit. It's in the back. If you care, you want to fast, and you want to pray, get one. I will not tell you you should. I'm going to encourage you to. The answer is in your hands. So who will go for us? Who will stand on God's promises knowing that all that we have to do is obey his word and do those four things? To be humble, to pray, to seek his face, and to do right. Church, the world is dying for lack of knowledge. And we love mercy enough to reach someone with the gospel today. We are told in Micah 6 verse 8, he says, He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what are the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. He cannot love mercy and do justly and walk with God in a, in a pious, sanctimonious, proud, arrogant way. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. I know this is not evangelistic. I know. I know I'm not here to just fire you up and get you excited and jump and hula. No, that's not my job. My job is to be the messenger of God, to do what God has called us to do, to make full proof of our ministry. That's my job. For all our sin and fall short of the glory of God, so we all have to turn from our ways and seek and pray in all humility for him to grant us the desires of our heart. So Naaman's servant was sure and confident of God's promise. The prophet was sure of God's promise to proclaim the word. And the only thing that was missing was for the leper to be sure of God's promise to perform the miracle that God had for him. So church, I'm asking you this morning, what are you holding up God's move on this because you doubt God's word on his promises? What desires do you have now that you want God to cure, yet you dismiss the messenger of God because of what you think it should be like, or it should look like. He knows your thoughts and your desires in your heart. He says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, as we read in our theme passage through 13, he says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you an expected end. An expected end. What is your desired expected end? Ask yourself that question this morning, church. What do you really desire of God? Is it a selfish desire? Or is it one as we heard last week, to delight ourselves also in the Lord. God is going to give you the desires of your heart. But you've got to give him the desires of his heart. 
You can't have it your way only. God wants you to be obedient. You have never lacked anything that God has, has promised you. You have a roof over your head. You have food to eat. Now, granted, you may not feel as strong in your body and sick, but God is faithful and he's fulfilling every promise. How are you fulfilling the promise for God? What are you going to do for God in 2024? Verse 12, then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me. There's another promise, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall reach, when ye shall search for me with some of your heart. Are you sure that's what it says, church? He just doesn't want a part of you, church. He wants all of you. Every single part of your heart submerged in the Spirit of God. But we need to pray, seek, and turn to Him in 2024. So this morning, I ask us to commit our works unto the Lord so that our thoughts will be established in Him. And as I close here this morning, I'm asking us to be strong enough to stand on his promises. As he says in Proverbs 16, verse 3, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. If you start doing, when you start thinking, even though you don't get paid to think, when you start thinking, you're likely going to be thinking with the mind of Christ. But you first got to commit your works through your obedience of what he's telling you to do this year. So what is he telling us to do this year? Each one. That's our mandate that we have this year. So let's start doing something for God today. Reach someone today, and the thoughts of doubt and despair shall all fade away as we stand on his promises and reach one person today. Pastor Jeff.